Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm bored. COVID has made me bored and I have gotten in, and because of COVID I have gotten into the ridiculous hobby of board gaming and tabletop gaming. And today we will be playing Project Elite, or I will be playing Project Elite. Project Elite is a tabletop miniature real-time action game. And it is the, in terms of the theme, it's sort of a space alien theme. It's kind of like Halo meets aliens in the tabletop version, on the tabletop format. This was a game I came across while watching a review for another board game that I was looking at getting. And it was Tom Vazel from Dice Tower, who, while reviewing, I think, one of his other games, he had mentioned Project Elite. I have never heard of this game. And in fact, ever since I've been getting into tabletop gaming, there's a lot of games that just I didn't even know existed. And it's sort of opened my eyes to this world of, of, of board games, tabletop board games, that it's just so fascinating. So Project Elite was the first miniature-based board game that I picked up, mainly because Tom Vazel really boasted about it, one of his favorite games of all time. And this one is the second edition published by Come On Games. And the miniatures, I think the quality from the previous uh, edition is much better from what I've been told. The gameplay is very straightforward. It's not like a, a, a complicated and challenging dungeon crawler or, or card game, uh, but it is, it's fun. It can be very entertaining. Basically, you are a, the last group of space marines defending Earth from an alien invasion. The alien invasion has a variety of monsters. They are quite gruesome looking from something as simple as like this, the runner to a shooter. And I have to say that the sculpts on these are, are really impressive. I've seen some online gaming guys uh, paint them. And in terms of their hobby of miniature painting, this is a biter. And they can do a phenomenal job. And it really brings it to life. One day I might, but not right now. And we have our hero characters. There are six of them. It's a game for one to six players. And it is a real-time game in the sense that you and your other players are playing concurrently. You are doing all your actions at the exact same time. People say that this kind of avoids the alpha gamer mentality. The quarterbacker of the group, it, yes, it does avoid it during the time that you're doing your action, but it doesn't really negate it completely because there can still be alpha gamer Alpha Gamer Syndrome in this in this particular board game. Just not as bad as other ones. Let me show you one of the, the bosses. These guys are really big and ugly. And the detail, though, is really, really intricate. If you take a look at the sizing of the sculpts. Sorry, let me get this in focus. There we go. You can see in terms of the size, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's good. It's a good size. So the game is broken into eight rounds. So you, the one nice thing about this game, what I like about it is it is quite intense. It can be very intense, very fast paced. It's broken into eight rounds. So there's a clear end point to this game. It's not going to drag on forever. There are, I believe, five phases to the game. The first phase is the event phase. During the event phase, you will be drawing an event card, and that's usually something circum circumstantial, something that happens uh, that that it could be environmental, it could be moving aliens in additional space, but it's usually, or something perpetual, like a, an ongoing negative effect to your team. After you've drawn that card, and there are eight events, so that's the also is the round tracker. After the event phase is the alien spawn phase, you'll draw from the Swarm Spawn deck, and the Swarm Spawn deck will dictate what aliens are going to spawn on the board. We have three spawn points, one, two, and three. They are randomized at the beginning of the game, and when you flip it over, 
you'll see that this one is indicating a runner. Three of them showing up this location. And this symbol means that they activate. If this symbol is not present, then they just appear on the board, but they don't activate. Activating means that they will use their ability and move. So you have a reference card for this particular type of alien. And he has a health of one. Most of the, the lower class aliens have a health of one. So it's a one shot, one kill. And they have a movement of three. So if this came on the board and it was activating, they would move, sorry, they would move three, three spaces. Likewise, if you have the other alien show up, the shooter, they have an ability which activates first, and then they have their health value and movement value. Bosses have a bit more to them. They are a bit more complicated. They have more power, they're more powerful, and usually their ability is a little bit more, more deadly. After you uh, reveal your swarm spawns, which is usually one swarm card per player that's playing, you would reveal a boss spawn card. And same same idea, this boss spawn card would flip over, I'm not going to look at it, and it would reveal the boss and where you would randomize where it would, uh, it would appear on the map. Then you would do your action phase. During your action phase is when you are moving, shooting, or moving aliens. And it is completely dice driven. So one of the things to note about this game is it is a lot of luck. I think involved. If you get really bad rolls, you won't get to do what you need to do. And there are six or seven different scenarios. All scenarios are very similar. You have an objective that you have to complete or get to. And once you get to it, you fulfill the objective and then you get back home. The object of the game is to com complete all the objectives, get home within the eight rounds. And that's the win condition. You can lose if all the aliens end up moving into your home base, which is on the far left side here, or if they kill one of your heroes, or if you are unable to complete the objectives after the eight rounds. An objective is usually like this. They all work really similar. They just change a little bit of the flavor text and a slight variation, but essentially it's all the same. Get to the point or the marker and fill it up with the appropriate dice. So this is a demolition. So you place this on the board. If your player is adjacent to this objective, they would hopefully roll um, three of these symbols, the tool symbols, they would allocate it and it's complete. So in terms of dice allocation, during the two minutes, during your action phase, you have two minutes to roll as much as you want, as fast as you want, and assign or allocate the dice as quickly as you can. So in that situation, for example, with, with this, you want to try to roll and try to see, I didn't get any tools, so I can roll again. I still think oh, I got one tool, so I, I, I would assign that one. And then I keep on rolling my dice until I get the three. So once that's done, these dice are locked into here. I can no longer use them. And that completes the objective. When you are rolling, you have several different symbols. You have, if you, if you roll this, you can use it to move. You don't have to use the symbols if you don't need them, but whatever you roll is available to you. The only symbol that you have to resolve every single time is this one. This one means that you must choose an alien on the board if there are any aliens on the board present and move them one space. So you have to resolve this symbol before doing anything else. This allows you to move one space. This is a symbol, an input symbol that is usually for either allocating to weapons or objectives. The search, allocating to weapons or objectives or running a search you saw when you are adjacent to a search token, and that allows you to choose from the search deck, which I'll show in just a second to hopefully get some upgrades. You have your machine gun, which is for activating weapons or allocating to objectives, and as you saw before, the tool. So those are the six sides. And like I said, you can roll as many times as you want, but you definitely have to resolve the red ones first. If you choose to allocate to your weapon, so for example, if I roll, hopefully roll, a gun. If I roll a gun and a tool, I would assign it or allocate it uh, to this card. You don't have to physically do it every time, but I think if you keep a mental check, it's okay. When you do this, it means it's loaded. It's ready to go. Once you've used it and it shoots um, based on the number of dice here. So the left side represents the range. So it's a two range. You roll two dice, two hit dice, and on a result of four or higher, you, it's a successful hit. And again, for most of these aliens, 
the min the little aliens, they're one shot, one kill. So one hit will do it. And the dice that you roll for your your bullets, basically, these represent your bullets. And whatever result based on the card would be a successful hit. Once you've used it, you are now able to reclaim your dice back to roll again, and then you can reload it again to shoot another two dice. Uh, every weapon is different. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one, sometimes the range is one, so it varies. If you allocate the dice and you choose not to use it, and instead uh, you want to take those dice back to roll, you have now unloaded the weapon, so it's no longer you can no longer fire it. And once you start to roll the two dice that you took back, that, that's it. You'd have to reallocate the dice in order for the weapon to be loaded. Some weapons require that the that the weapon is locked, and what that means is you would lock the dice on that card, and you can no longer use that dice for the rest of the round. So if you locked one dice, you would end up having to roll three. So it's pretty neat in the sense that it does challenge you to think about what kind of weapons you want to use, how you want to use those weapons, and what circumstances. Some weapons are more powerful, but then it comes at a cost, which usually means you have to lock their dice. So when you are Going back, when you do a successful search using one of these, there's usually three on the board. You would take three cards, and you would choose one out of the three, and these are usually upgrades or abilities. So in this situation, this is an attachment. It allows me to gain one uh, an additional hit dice. This one increases my the weapon of the range of my weapon by two, and this is an, uh, an example of a new weapon. And it usually has, you know, sometimes a special ability, but it also gives you the dice face allocations that you need to activate this or load this one. So that's sort of an example of, of the search cards. If you kill a boss, which is those pink big guys, like this one, these are bosses, you would end up drawing from the alien tech. Now, alien tech are usually supposed to be more powerful weapons. I don't really find them that useful all the time. But same idea, you draw three and you choose one from the three. So that's sort of a rundown. You can, um, after your action phase, you've got the alien activation phase, in which case all the aliens would activate their abilities and they would move. Then your fifth phase is the end of round where you check for victory conditions, which I already mentioned. And then you go through the process again, starting the next round by drawing the next event card. You can find, I found the rulebook online. Before I bought this game, I read through the rulebook just to get a sense of how the gameplay works. And that's typically what I do for all the games I've been buying. And I liked it. I liked the idea. I liked the fact that the min they're miniatures. I liked the dice rolling, the dice chucking. There is luck involved. So your, your two games never played the same twice. <clears throat> and it all depends on the kind of rolls you get. I've had really bad luck rolls and I've also gotten really good rolls where I've finished around and uh, finished the game or complete my objectives in like three rounds. So here we go. We're going to play Project Elite. I've got the board set up. I've got my objectives randomly placed. And I do sort of a mix up of all the different scenarios. This is not a particular scenario. What I've done is I've combined them all. And I think I am missing one. So let me just quickly roll. This is six, which is already taken. We'll do four. Okay, so we have a capture, which is on four. Where's four? Here's four. So this is a capture objective. So what I've done is I've laid out three exploration objectives. I've laid out a extermination point objective, which is all the way near the front base. These are all randomly assigned. And one of my players has a demolition token, which he will have to bring to this location here. Uh, put it down and arm it. So in terms of scalability and difficulty, you can defi definitely scale this to meet your challenge needs. So with every player that you add on, it goes up to six players. With every player you add on, you would draw an additional swarm spawn card. You can also increase the difficulty by drawing an additional boss spawn. And you can also increase the difficulty by changing the type of event cards. There are some event cards that are very, very difficult and very challenging, while other ones are no effect. Same with the boss spawn deck. There are eight bosses and 12 sort of all clear cards. All clear basically means it doesn't do anything. Nothing happens. But for me, I have removed six of the all clears. So I have six left with eight boss cards in there. 
And this game plays really well with two people or more. I think it gets a bit more chaotic if you go above maybe three or four players because you're all rolling dice at the same time and you're all moving the aliens at the same time. But there is a solo variation where instead of rolling four dice per player uh, as the single solo person that you are, you are rolling five dice and controlling two players at the same time. I've tried that. I'm not really a pro at this yet. My mind is a little sluggish. So what I've done is a, a different variant, which is I give each player that I ha have control over two minutes to play, and I roll four dice. So that's just my variation. And I, I sort of compensate for that by changing the layout of the board uh, in terms of the objectives, as well as adjusting the boss bond deck uh, and the event deck to create a bit more difficulty. So that's how I, I, how I balance it out. Today, on my team, I have Garrett. And in terms of the players, they have a health tracker. And you'll notice that there is a sort of a marker here that is a threshold. The threshold indicates if your life goes past this threshold, you lose one of your action dice. So out of the four, you lose one. And he typically, and typically they have a special ability. His special ability is he does not receive push damage. Push damage is when an alien moves into you and they move you out of the way. You don't take damage. We have Akosha, and she has her special ability. You'll notice her health amount is different, but her thresholds are also different. So it's nice to have a little bit of variety. Not all the players play the same, which is gives you a sort of an option to really craft how you want to, to build your team. So I think we're ready. First thing we're going to do is draw an event card. And in this event card, we've drawn a immediately reveal and an additional swarm spawn card. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reveal three shooters allocation sh three, and you'll notice that there is no activation symbol, so they do not activate. So one, two, and three. Oh, and he's right in the capture point. That's the first one. I'm drawing three. The second one is another two shooters, or sorry, another three shooters at location one. One, two, and they don't activate either. And the last swarm spawn card is a biter. Two of them at location three and they activate. So uh, location three is kind of full right now, except for this spot. So what happens is they get pushed forward to fill in these spots. Oh, sorry, it's just two. And then because of this symbol, these biters activate. And their ability for reference is they do one damage to a hero within range one, and there isn't. And they have a health of one, and they move two. As I was saying, I downloaded the rule book so that I could one, two, and they push forward, one, two. I downloaded the rule book, went through it. I enjoyed it, uh, the gameplay. So that's why I, I purchased this game. So you can easily watch sort of a how to play video. I'm not going to go through every single rule. I think I've done sort of a quick overview in the 18 minutes. And we're just going to play. So the next thing we'll do, reveal our first uh, boss spawn is an all clear. Thank goodness. So we are set to go. I'm going to set the timer for two minutes. And I'm going to start with Garrett. We're going to try to get to that search. And this is an example of where prior to starting the round, you could easily be sort of the, um, the alpha gamer and start dictating who should do what. But once you're playing, you really don't have uh, time to talk about that. So as you can see already, I've got a lot of alien movement. And that is one of the interesting pieces is that it does create some tension when you're not rolling very well. So I'm here by a search point, and I've rolled a search, so I get to pull that. And I think I'm going to try to move out here, try to get um, maybe some aliens coming in. Oh boy, one, two, and I get to move one. He moves one, I move one. I have a wrench, which I'm going to put aside and load my weapon. He's going to move in. I have another wrench. He moves in. I have a gun, so I'm going to roll two dice, and it's a four higher. So I get six. I take him out, but this one's out of range, so I don't get to 
to utilize that. And I get to move again. I have a gun, which I'm loading up. I have another gun. I have my wrench and I get to move. I will move here and I'm going to fire two. And it's a four or higher, which I failed on that one. So it's a miss. Uh, we'll move this one here. I'm going to try to flip this over because we are adjacent to it. We have a gun. I have 24 seconds left on the clock. I have my wrench and I'm going to fire two. These two are within range. I have a five and a six. So these two are gone. And 13 seconds to do something, which I'm going to try to move maybe forward if I can. Forward. Forward and search. Okay. Because I had this icon. Okay, so that ends my turn. I've managed to flip over two objectives. The first one is draw a search card. So I'm going to draw a search card from my search deck. And I get a exile weapon, which, uh, you know what? I think I'll take it. I'll take the exile weapon. And I'll get rid of this. And this one is this band alarm. Reveal one less boss, bo uh, boss card during the next alien spawning phase. So that means I don't reveal any. So that's actually to our benefit. So I'll just keep that on top there just to note it. And now uh, we drew a search token. So once we draw a search token, I'll flip it over to say that I've, that area is located. You can't search a location more than once in, a, in one round. I'm going to draw my three search cards. And what do I get? They're all weapon, oh, two weapons and an item. Uh, I think I like my exile uh, weapon, so I'm going to choose extra ammo. So what happens is if I fulfill this, I get all your weapons gain plus one hit die until the end of the round and discard this after you. So it's a one-time use, but I get one extra dice to roll. So kind of useful if I roll it right. So the next thing to happen now will be Akosha's turn. So we're going to try to get her in either here to search and maybe bring, bring some of these guys down this way so she can knock them out. One of the nice things is because you are controlling the movement, and I forgot to mention on the board, uh, you'll see that there are arrows on the board. This dictates alien movement. So it's, it's sort of programmed in. That sort of makes it very easy. You don't have to think. The most you have to think about is what aliens do you want to move when you roll a red a red movement dice uh, face. So you can easily play that in your favor, which is, oh, well, I don't want these guys to, to come around Garrett, so I'll just use these guys and move them down here and have Akosha plant, the, plant herself right here to shoot them. If these were smart aliens, they would come after him, right? And you could probably easily, easily do that. So... There is a little bit of bias when you're playing because you are controlling alien movement. Now, I don't know if this is a, if it's possible to create a one versus many in this situation, where every time you roll two reds, you have a uh, that one player keep track, and they're the ones to move the aliens. That would be an interesting variation. I don't know how that how well that would play out, but it would certainly remove the bias. Okay, so two minutes, Akosha. Here we go. Of course, one, two, and three. Here we go. One, two, one, one, one. Wow, not good, not good rolls here. Maybe I can sort of move these guys past, past that point. Come on, I need a search quick. I need a search quick. I got it, search. And I need to get back out if I can. One, two, three. Here we go. She has to get in close and personal. So she has a gun. We need another wrench. We have a wrench. It's loaded, so I can keep that there and roll the additional two, um, which I'm going to try here to maybe maximize my ammo. Oh, now I don't get any reds, right? Here we go. There's one. There's two. There's three. And now I'm going to fire two 
with a three or higher, I get one. So I'm going to take this one out. I get two more movements and a wrench and a gun. And I'm going to fire a three or higher. So this one's gone. Okay. So I'm going to try to... I have 19 seconds left. One, two. Uh, one, two. And we have a wrench. We have movement. Movement. Okay. I do have one movement. I'll move right here. Oh, actually, no, I'll stay here. Okay. So, Akosha has a end of action phase ability, which is she can either move three spaces or she can activate one of her weapons for free. She's going to activate that weapon for free because the biter is right in front of her and she gets one hit. So that's good enough to take him out. She has earned herself a search. So she'll take from the search deck. One, two, three. And let's see what we got here. A range booster, which gives plus two range, which might be useful, and reducing target value. I'm gonna take the range booster because her exo shotgun is limited to range of one. It'd be nice to have three. So in this in in this situation, you'll see that here's my here's my original weapon. At the bottom, you'll see there's no marker, sort of a, a blocking marker at the bottom, and that means I'm allowed to attach, uh, sorry, this um, range booster this side. Once I've done that, I gain one, two, three range. But you'll see that there's a sort of a blocking hazard marker here. That means I can no longer add attachments that affect range but I am still able to add any attachments that might affect either the number of dice, hit dice I can use, or the value that I need for a successful hit. So that's, again, kind of neat as you can upgrade and customize your weapons. I, I think that's a neat aspect of the game. Okay, so we're done the action phase. So now the we go into the alien activation phase, and we have two shooters on the board. We... For the shooter, their ability is if there's a hero within range three, they suffer one damage on a four or higher. So Garrett is within range three, so we'll start with him first. And on a four or higher, we roll, it is a two. So it's a miss. Now, Akosha is within range three, but I, I don't consider her line of sight from the center of the square to the center of this. So under normal circumstances, if I were trying to take a shot, I wouldn't be able to target this person, even if they were in range, because I'm line of, um, not within line of sight. Here, I'd be able to, but not here, not here. So I think it should apply both ways. So in this situation, the shooter does not have line of sight, so he cannot shoot. It doesn't indicate here whether or not he ignores line of sight. Other like boss cards, they actually say ignore line of sight. So I'm going to take that as the shooter cannot see her. So that ends the alien activation. We're checking for win-loss conditions. We haven't, but we have completed two objectives. We are now entering the second round. Here comes up the Overwhelmed. So this is a perpetual event card. And it says, before the alien spawning phase, each hero must move three spaces following the alien path, which is backwards. I forgot to mention that the alien path, they are all going in one direction, which is towards your home base. So that is one of the loss conditions if they all reach if any one of the aliens reaches your home base. So in order for us to cancel or negate this event in a two player game, we have to assign and lock uh, a dice face of a machine gun and a search. As you increase the number of player counts, you would have to increase the number of dice required to to sort of negate this uh, event card. So we'll keep this in play. And we'll try to remember that we have to fill that up. So we would now go into the alien spawning phase, in which case we have to move back three spaces. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So if this keeps on happening, if we are unable to cancel that event card, we will eventually end up, we will constantly, as we advance, we'll constantly be pushed back. So we're going to reset our search cards, our search tokens. Now we are into the uh, spawning phase. We're going to spawn two runners at location one, and they activate. So two runners at location one, they activate. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. The next one uh, is 
three biters at location two. Uh, one, two, and three, and they activate. So one, two, one, two, one, two. This capture point is going to be difficult. That's right. Okay, and now because we had revealed the disband alarm, we don't have to reveal a boss spawn uh, this, this round. Good for us. Okay, so at this stage, if I had another player, we could plan what we want to do. I think Garrett can, he's got the most weapons right now. I think he should be able to go in here, maybe try to clear out. I think we'll have Akosha stay back, maybe do another search so she can gain a, a second weapon. And we'll try to have Garrett reach this exploration and possibly this extermination. That's a lot to ask, but maybe that's what we can we can aim for. Okay, so we're going to start with Garrett first. We're going to put two minutes on the clock. Here we go. So he gets move. Um, move one, one, two. We're going to try to take these guys out. So I have on a four higher, I get this. So these two are gone. I have another gun, which I'll load, but I'm going to try to... Oh, I have that, so I'm going to roll. Hopefully take that one out. I get a two and a one. That's a miss. Move, move, wrench. Gun. Fire. Oh, again, two. Now, uh, am I going to move? I'll move here. Actually, I'll move here. Sorry. I could have done the, the input, but I didn't. Here we go. Okay, so we can reveal this one. And we get to move. I'll move here. Actually, no, I'll move. I'll move here. Because I'm going to try to fulfill that extermination point. We have another movement. Another movement. And now I move. And I'm trying to fill 49 seconds to fill three guns. Here's one gun. We have a move. Another gun. Two moves and a gun. So now I've completed that. I have one dice to, to roll to try to move my way out of there. And hopefully get out of a spawn location. I'll come back here. Oh. Fifteen seconds left. And try to put myself in a, a better location. Try to come around. Okay. Okay. So that was it. That's the end of his turn. Not too bad. I think uh, Garrett's going to try to get back to because he's the one carrying his uh, demol demolition token. So that's pretty good. We've completed one, two objectives. For this objective exploration, we revealed one extra swarm spawn card during the next alien spawning phase. So I'll put that as a reminder. And I think that's it. We have completed this extermination objective. So this is now complete. You can take that off the board. Good job, Garrett. So now we'd be moving to Akosha's turn. And for Akosha, I think for her right now, she should do some alien management, which might be this location here. So we're going to go ahead and put two minutes on the clock. And we're going to try to manage this alien swarm that's coming in hot and heavy. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I need one more alien movement. That's good. So she has a range of two. So she's going to fire two, sorry, a range of three. And it's a three or higher I missed. So that's not good. And we have an alien movement. We have a gun again. And another alien movement. Uh, they're getting pretty close. Uh, finally. Okay, so I have a range of three or higher. I need one, so I'm going to take this one out. Uh, I get another gun. Rolling two more. I get a three, so I'll take this one out. You can choose where you want your your uh, hits to be allocated to. So, so I got another load here. Three are heart. Okay, these two are gone. That's pretty good. Then I get a movement, so I'm going to move up. 
Actually, I wanted to move her back to try to get a search, right? So, one, two, one. She has 44 seconds left. One, two. Oh, boy. One, two, one. Oh, this is not good. Uh, you know what? Let's go in and try to take care of this guy. I'm load up my weapon. It's loaded. I have 26 seconds. I have a range of three. I need a three heart. Okay, good. He's gone. And I might be able to get myself back. We can ignore the alien movements because there are no aliens on the board. And I can search. Perfect. And let's try to get back into position here. So that ends our round. She has her uh, end of phase ability, which is she can move three spaces. I think we'll move her three spaces here. One, two, three. Put her in, in, in sort of covering position. She drew a search token. So we're going to draw three cards. One, two, three. We get a uh, multi-launcher, launch pack, and damage booster. So in this situation, if I wanted to get the damage booster, I could... Uh, add that to my my exo shotgun for three dice, three hit dice. But I want the multi launcher. For the multi launcher, you'll see that there are uh, two allocations of dice required. Uh, both guns, you'll see that has red background and the locking border, which means that when I assign these two dice to it, it's locked. I can no longer use those two dice during the round. I have infinite range. And I roll four hit dice with a result of two or higher for a successful hit. So pretty powerful, but at a cost. So And it only shoots in a straight line, uh, orthogonal, orthogonally and diagonally. So that was our search. That was the end of the round. We would move into the alien activation phase. No aliens on the board. So we don't have to worry about that. We go straight to checking win-loss conditions. No win-loss conditions, but we forgot about this. So now we move back three spaces. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. So we are now in the next round. This overwhelm continues to stay active. It's perpetual until I cancel it. We draw another event card, which is large numbers. During the alien spawning phase, whenever you spawn a swarm, spawn one additional figure of that type. So we definitely want to cancel these out we might spend this round focusing on canceling that out. So now I have two perpetual event cards that are creating a little bit of, of difficulty for me. So it's the sw swarm spawn phase. I reveal one extra swarm spawn card during the next alien spawning phase. That was what I revealed. So lucky us, this is so bad, but that's okay. This is not mission easy, it's mission impossible, right? So shooter, three shooters, now four shooters at location two. So we have location two, one, two, three, and four, and they do not activate. Here's our second one. We have two shooters at location two, and they activate. So three shooters at location two. Uh, well, that overwhelms it. So one, two. So two more shooters, and they're going to activate. So uh, sorry, it's three because it's an additional one. And I'm short one, so I'm going to grab. So they would have all pushed. So the three would be the three here. So let's move them. One. One. And one. Okay. And our last swarm spawn. Five biters at location one. So one, two, three, four, five. And they do not activate. Okay, we reveal our boss spawn. It is Ashar. You roll one hit die for each hero within range of four. Each hero suffers damage on a three or higher. He has health of three, movement of four. He activates as soon as he comes out. So Ashar looks like this. And we choose, or we randomize where he's going to go to, and it'll be location three, which will be right here. He has a health of three. I use a dice to, to mark his health. And he moves 
four. So he's going to push all these guys out of the way. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. Okay, so cleared the board on one round at the end of last round, and now all of a sudden it feels like I have twice as many. Okay, Garrett needs to get to this point to drop his objective. We are pretty much unlucky with the capture, and we might be very unlucky with this capture because this is highly luck. We need a, an alien to be sitting in this spot at the end of our action round. So I think I'll start with Akosha and try to empty this area for, for Garrod. I'm not too worried about here. I can let these guys move forward a little bit, and I think I'll be okay with that. Okay, so we're going to start with Akosha. Here we go. Two minutes on the clock. We move one. We're going to try to get her in position. We have one gun that we're locking and a second gun that we're locking. Okay, so I can move two. I will move two. I'll move one. I'm firing four on a two or higher, and I get two. Lovely. So I'll take out... Uh, these two. Well, that was just a terrible roll. So now I only have two dice left, in which case I can only, I'm very limited in what I can do. Probably wasn't the greatest decision to make, but it is what it is. I'll move here. I will move here. I have a gun and I roll two on a three or higher. I get one. Uh, alien movement, another alien movement, a gun, I need a wrench, please, alien movement, alien movement, alien movement, wow, I really, okay, here, two, I have 40 seconds left, I have one, alien movement, I have a gun, and I have movement. Wrench, firing two. Uh, this one's gone. Oh, I'm not really rolling that great for my hits. Actually, I would have used that last one. So here we go. I need a gun, please. Here we go. I have a four and a six. One to him and one to him. I have... Six and five, he's dead. Okay. Not bad. I took out Ashar. I actually did what I intended to do, which was clear this area. So now I'm at the end of my action phase for Akosha, and she gets to move three spaces or activate a weapon without any dice on it for free. So I'm going to activate my shotgun. Since if these guys were in line, I would actually activate my multi-launcher. But I'm going to act activate my shotgun. I have a range of three. I fire for two. I'm hoping to take this one out. And I missed. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Because I killed Ashar, I draw three alien tech cards. One, two, three. And I will choose... I will choose this one, Porous Shells. Uh, for the rest of the this action phase, you may re-roll any, hit, any hit dice once. That's uh, not that great. And again, I forgot to take care of Overwhelmed in large numbers. So I think Garrett is going to focus on that. He cannot uh, complete his objective at this point. I was totally forgetful. Okay, so Garrett's going to move in. He'll try to move in uh, into this location and take this one out. If not, he'll just assign, he'll just spend his dice assigning to the uh, event cards. Here we go, two minutes. So I get one and a search, so I cancel overwhelmed. I get to move. I will move one. Uh, I have, I need two tool cards. I have one. Uh, we have a movement, another movement, and a wrench. Okay, so I assigned the two wrench for large numbers. That is the event card, and it gets canceled. So I've got a minute and 30 seconds left. I don't need to wait until that point. I already know that as of right now, Garrett can't do anything else. 
He has no end of action, and he has basically given up his opportunity to complete this objective by by cancelling two event cards. So I'm just waiting for the timer to stop, and then we can go into the alien activation. So these two event cards are now done. Four, three, two, one. There we go. Okay. So we now end our our alien our action phase. We move into the alien activation phase. We'll start with this lone gunman here, the shooter. Shooter is uh, within a range of three. One, two, one, two, three. They are both in within range. He's gonna roll a dice on a four or higher, they'd suffer one damage. So Akosha first. She gets a six, so she takes one damage. And Garrod has a four, he takes one damage. Neither of them have reached their threshold, so that's okay. And he moves in one. The biters, no one's no heroes in their air, so they move in two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. Uh, now we go to the next round. Round four. Oh, lovely. Exhaustion. Hero special abilities have no effect. So that means Akosha's ability and Garrod, who uh, does not suffer damage when you push him, those are negated right now. If we cancel this card during our action phase, it's canceled. So then this no longer applies. So it's been fulfilled. So we can try to do that if we want to. Next thing up, Swarm Spawn. Here goes our first one. Two shooters at location one. And they activate, so they move in one. Next one is two runners at location two. And they activate. Uh, hmm, this is not good. Okay, so this runner is going to activate, which means he's going to push the shooter into Kosha, and she's going to take another hit. So one, two, three, she gets pushed. One, two, three. And again, we don't have anybody in the capture point, so we're in trouble again. And Akosha takes another hit. Okay, so. And then now we're revealing our boss spawn, and it is Mind Eater. Mind Eater is right here. Resident Evil lookalike. Health of six. And is going to show up in location two, right here. And his ability is all aliens within range three, ignoring line of sight, move one space. So one, two, three. One, two, th one, two, and three. So all these guys are moving up one space. So this one, move one, one, one. And then Mind Eater moves two, one, two, with a health of. Six. Okay. Swarm spawn, boss spawn, complete. Finished the alien spawn phase. Now we are into our action phase. Well, this capture location really sucks because we don't have an, we, we we can't have an alien in here. So it's gonna be a, a little bit of a challenge. I think we'll well we want Garrett to get here. So let's start with Garrett. And, and move him into this location to fulfill that objective. Okay, so Garrett first, here we go. Move, move, I have a wrench, uh, alien movement, and I get to move, but I don't need to. I would like a gun, actually, thank you. And I'm firing two, four or higher. I'll take that one. And I'm going to uh, move this one. I'm going to, I need three wrenches to complete. So we're moving two, one, two. We have a wrench. I'm going to stay where I am. We have alien movement. I need a wrench, please. Wrench and a wrench. Okay, so I'm replacing this objective token with my demolition. And I have one dice to roll which I'm just going to try to move into a better location. Oh wait, I have, um, sorry, I, ha I do have a weapon that allows me to. So I can use this one. And it's two dice, 
on a six or higher. <laughs> no luck. Movement. Uh, two or six or higher. Nope. That's not the greatest weapon ever. Gun, six or higher. Yes, we get one. Ha ha. Ah, another one. Five. Oh, darn. Oh. Well. Uh, I can roll a dice. Six or higher. Nope. Movement. Six or higher. Nope. Okay. Okay. That does it for that. I have completed this demolition. So I'm going to take this off the board. And it's Akosha's turn. I think Akosha. Oh, that's risky. She's going to focus on, on completing this, uh, this event card, negating it, but she wants to take this one out first. If she can. Yeah, okay. Here we go, Akosha. Here we go. So, one, two. I have a gun. I would like a wrench. Uh, one, two. Oh, boy. Oh, no. One. A wrench, please. One, two. I have a wrench, and I get to fire two, three or higher. Oh, <laughs> total miss. I have another gun. I have another alien movement. Oh, this is not looking good. I have a wrench. I have this and this. Thank you. And I'm going to lock these two into there. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to move if I can. One. One more. One more movement, please. Okay. Uh, let's try to get an alien movement right in here. Perfect. I'm firing my multi launcher. Two or higher? <laughs> I get two. Lovely. All right. I load that up and I roll for two. I get one. That one's good. I'm going to try to move back into base. so bad. Okay, that wasn't good. So Kosha can fire a weapon if she wants. Oh, and I totally forgot exhaustion. So she can't, uh, she can't use her ability. Okay. Okay, that's okay. There's no impact to us. Uh, okay, so we're going to activate uh, the biters. So he's going to move in two, one, two. Uh, so normally, because of the walls, the spider has no line of sight. So one, two, uh, one, two, one, two, and mine eater moves in one, two. There are no aliens within one, uh, three spaces of him. So he's just gonna move one, two, we'll put him there. All right. So now we go into our event phase, which is immediate reveal and resolve one additional boss spawn card. Okay, lovely. So our boss spawn is Thrax. He's a big guy. He's the big guy, Thrax. Heroes within range three suffer one damage. Heroes within range one suffer one additional damage. So lucky us. And he's going to appear in location four, which is right here. And he moves two, one, two, darn. 
and he has a health of six. All right. So, Swarm's one. Runner at location three, they activate. Three runners. One, two, three, they activate. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, gosh. Three buyers at location three and they activate. One, two, and three, they move in two. Uh, here, one, two, one, two, one, two. Again, we don't have any anybody in the capture point, so this is going to be, I think, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to move my capture point here. I know it's cheating. It's just that this is impossible. There's no way I'll be able to get a capture in if uh, if this is the if they keep on moving so it's too close at the beginning okay then we reveal another boss one naga right there oops naga and naga has a slime token which i don't have right now on adjacent space following an alien path health of three moves three Okay, so we will put Naga in location one, right here. Uh, and she places a slime in an adjacent location right there. And she's going to move three. One, two, three. And she has a health of four. Okay. Okay, here we go. So... We're going to start with Akosha because I want her to take care of this one and these three. Um, yeah, let's start with her first. Here we go. Uh, alien movement. I get to move. We want to also complete exhaustion if we can. I'm going to load up my gun. I'm going to move, I'm going to fire two, three or higher, I do, I get this one and this one, perfect. I'm going to move again, I'm going to try to do a search if it's helpful, actually you know what, no, I'm just going to move back out, one, two, one, one, and I need a wrench, um, gun, oops, gun for two. Yep, you're done. Okay, let's try to um, move and move. We have a wrench. We'll put the wrench here. We have a gun, which we're going to assign to exhaustion, and we'll assign this gun to exhaustion, so that's completed. And I have a gun that's loaded now, but uh, really doesn't do me any good because I have nowhere to move, so I'm going to take it back. We're going to try to move these guys in. We'll move in one, two... Another one, we have a gun, another gun, another movement, another movement, another gun, gun, movement, I need a wrench, oh sorry, movement, movement, <laughs> another movement, another gun, I would like a wrench please, I would like a wrench. Thank you, wrench for two. I get one. Take this one out. Four, three, two, one. There we go. Okay, so uh, I have completed the event card that was exhaustion. So that's negated now, which gives me back my ability. And that ability is I can activate a weapon, and I'm going to activate my weapon, my shotgun. I get one, so that one's dead. Okay, so Garrett's turn. Garrett's going to try to move in here and activate this capture. I'd really like to take the Thrax out, if possible, because that's a lot of bosses on the board. But if I complete this objective, we'd be done, and all I have to do is get home. So I think we'll focus on completing the objective. Here we go. So we have an alien movement. I have a gun and a wrench. I'm going to try to move the Thrax a little closer. 
and hopefully move myself. Here we go. So I'm going to throw a two or higher. I'm sorry, two on a four or higher. I get one. So he takes a hit. I have another gun and a wrench. I'm going to roll four or higher. I missed on that one. Let's try to move into the objective here. And oh, I have a movement one, two, and we have one in there. I'm going to move right here, Mind Eater. I have to move one, and I need a wrench. I have a gun in this. I'm going to fire for two on a four higher. So I have range of, I have a range of two. So I'm going to take him on two. I have, oh, I have another one. Uh, four. So he's down to three. I have a gun and another gun, another gun, another gun. Come on. I need the input. I need input. Uh, that's alien movement. This is so bad. I need input. I need the input. I need the input. 26 seconds left. Input. Input. Oh, no. Input. Oh, no. Input. There we go. Completed. So we get to capture. Uh, I'm going to capture this one. <laughs> I'll take the I'll take the bite. It doesn't matter. Three, two, one, zero. Okay. <sighs> okay. So you can tell it's a bit intense, especially, and it's just me. So we've completed this this capture. In a capture position, you only get to choose one of the two sides. So I'm going to cap capture this one. It's a capture. It's not a kill. So he doesn't. I don't get to draw from any. Uh, um, a search deck and now this capture point gets cleared we have completed all our objectives but our and now our heroes just have to make it home alive if possible okay so now we're going to activate and we will start with it doesn't really matter which order you activate them in so i'm going to go ahead and let's see the thrax mind eater is dead so it's just naga and thrax left so we're we're in a little a little bit of a doozy here. So let's activate the, this biter first, the biters. Actually, we'll activate the runner. So runner is one, two, three, because no one's around. The biter, this biter moves in two, because uh, it's a range of one, one, two. Range of one, this biter is adjacent, even though there's blocking, but it is adjacent. And we will roll on a four higher, so Garrett takes one. He now has passed his first threshold, which means that he has one locked dice. So this biter is going to move one, two. This biter is going to move two. Isn't it's uh, Garrett is within a, without out of range. One, two. Naga is going to place down a slime token. Slime tokens don't really do anything other than if uh, if an alien steps on it, they actually advance one extra space. And he's going to move three one two three okay thrax is going to activate and heroes within range three one two three suffer one damage so garrett takes another one if he was within range one he'd suffer an additional and thrax moves two one two okay we're, we're in a position where all we really need to do is get home so i think i'll start with i think i'll start with garrett Try to get back, and uh, but before I do that, I have to do all the event cards. Sorry, here we go. Event card: move any aliens a total of three spaces combined. Uh, one, two, three. That's our event. Swarm spawn number one. Three shooters at location two, and they do not activate. One, two, and three. Swarm spawn five. Runners at location four, which would be here. Lovely. That's a little crowded for me, but let's try to do our best. Uh, one, two, three, 
four, five. And they do not activate, thank goodness. Okay. And our boss spawn is a seer sting. Here we go, seer sting. And you are going to show up in location six, which would be right here. Sure, we'll put you right there. You have heroes within range two suffer one damage. Uh, health of three. Movement of three. One, two, three. Okay. We're ready. Okay, let's start with Garrett. Let's start with Garrett, and uh, we're going to try to move him back. Here we go. Two minutes to move back, and I'm going to assign this one to my extra ammo, because I think I could really use it, and I assign this. So now I am allocating it. I get to use plus one to my shots. So I have this, um, and I have two movement. One, two. I have movement and I have this, so I have three dice to roll and a four higher, I get one. Okay, remember the goal is to get back. Actually, you know, I'm just going to try to focus my best on getting back. Range of three on a four higher, this one's gone. I'm going to move back, move back, one, two. One, two, one, 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 one. Okay, he's home. Whew. Okay, so we're in good shape. Akosha just needs to get back. Um, yeah, well, we'll see what we can do here. <laughs> We got 30 seconds left on the clock. So we are in round, what is this, round six? So in six rounds, we've completed the objectives. We are on our way home. And as you can see, it, it got a little tense, especially in this area. And I, I'm pretty sure had I not moved that capture point, I would lose for sure. But I think this is a very unfair capture point, even though right now I feel like I, I would have had an opportunity to, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain. Four, three, two, one. Here we go. Okay. So it's a coach's turn. Here we go. So we're going to see what we can do. She does have her ability to move in three spaces. We're going to see what we can do here. We're going to try to move in a few aliens to hopefully um, balance out. Uh, we'll put this gun and this gun. We're going to lock this in. Because I want to try to do some damage here before we go home. So one, actually we'll go one and two. So I'm firing four. I get one, two, and three. So one, two. And he takes one. So he's down to two. All right, so my focus right now is just to get home. One. One, two. <laughs> one, two. One. Come on. 48 seconds. Here we go. One. So she gets to move in three at the end of her turn. So I'm not going to risk rolling any more red dice. I'm going to leave this as, as is. Okay. So let's just go ahead. Uh, end of activation or end of uh, action phase. We're going to activate her. One, two, three. She is home. Now we're going to go to the alien activation phase. We'll start with... Well, this is a little bit of trouble, but that's okay. We're going to start with the, um, the, the bosses here. So Thrax... Heroes within range three suffer, so he's nothing. So he's going to move in two, one, two. Seer Sting, uh, heroes within range two suffer one damage, no heroes. So he's going to move in three, one, two, three. Naga is 
going to move uh, place a slime token. We'll place a slime token. Oh, sorry. Where is my last slime token here? We'll place a slime token right here. And we're going to go uh, one, two, and three. This is getting close. Okay, so now we'll activate uh, the biter. One, two. We'll activate the shooter. He moves in one. This one moves in one. And now we'll activate the runners. One, two, three. 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 Okay. So we have done the activation round. We are now in the end of phase where we check win-loss conditions. So it's close, but we have won. We've finished all, all our objectives, which was one, two, three, four, five, six. We finished all our objectives. Our players are back in their home base. There are no aliens in our home base, although they are entering the, the facility. We are at a win condition. So we won. Good job. And as you can see, this is a, it can be a really fun game. When you're playing with someone else, it can get very intense. And I imagine, I've only played with another person, but I imagine three or four players would be really chaotic. I think six would be a complete nightmare on this board. It takes up a lot of space on this board, but it, it is a lot of fun. So there you have it, Project Elite, a great real-time miniature game. There's a little bit of strategy involved. I wouldn't say it's complicated, but it's, it's a, a fun game that has a definitive end to it as you have to complete in eight rounds. The real-time dice chucking, if you like, sort of push your luck system just for the fun of it. it. It's a lot of fun to do that, to assign the action, hopefully get good rolls. If you don't get good rolls, you can have a really bad game, so you have to be okay with that. You can definitely scale this game to match a difficulty that suits you the best. You can definitely increase it, the difficulty, a lot more. You can increase the number of sw swarm spawns that you want to reveal or remove the number of all clears from the event deck or the boss spawn. So you can do a lot of customization and this game can be quite, quite fun. So Project Elite, we have a win situation. Good job, Garrett. Good job, Akosha. They live to fight another day. Thanks for playing. Stay bored.